So I know I'm going to get a lot of down thumbs for saying this, especially since uh, throughout the 2016 uh, presidential election, I was uh, in the corner of Hillary Clinton, but um, I feel sometimes some things just have to be said. So here goes. Uh, this is a response to Steve Shives and Jenny McDermott and everyone else who says, uh, like the change.org petition once, that Hillary Clinton won the popular vote and therefore the Electoral College should take that in, into consideration when they convene in December and they should make Hillary Clinton president instead of Donald Trump, who won the majority of states based on how the Electoral College is uh, laid out. So, uh, no. My first bone of contention here is uh, when people simply say that Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. Okay? Um, according to the number of registered voters in the United States, Hillary Clinton did not win the popular vote, nor did Donald Trump. Actually, the vote that got the most votes was, I don't want to show up and vote at all, okay? Hillary Clinton got about 63 plus million, and Donald Trump got about 61 and a half plus million, and 90 million people just sat this one out. So to say that she had the popular vote is, is no. She had the most votes of any actual candidate, but... If you're going to tell the Electoral College members that they need to have this crisis of conscience and, and, and they need to vote someone in because they had the popular vote, you are disregarding all of the people who sat this one out intentionally because they were like, no, none of these. Or something happened that kept them from getting to their polling place. Something suppressed their vote. And to say that you know what was on the mind of all of those other registered voters and that you know if they had voted, if they were forced or if they were given the opportunity to vote, that they would have you know, come up with the same results as just counting Clinton versus Trump, that, that no, you don't know that, okay? This election cycle was brutal in the way that psychologically the American public was prepared for the coronation of Hillary Clinton okay um, everyone was shocked by the outcome even Donald fucking Trump was shocked by the outcome you can see it on his fucking face every time he makes a public appearance right now he's like holy shit this is actually happening That had a giant effect on voter turnout. Um, the 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 reason why uh, Hillary didn't win in all of the states that that Trump won was because she didn't get the same turnout that Barack Obama did. And why? Maybe it was because the media had you know suppressed all of those people by making them think that she had this in the bag and. You know, if this is going to affect their ability to earn tips for that night, maybe they shouldn't uh, leave work for an hour or two to go stand in a line because, you know, they're not going to make a difference, you know. But, on the other hand, the depression that all of that media coverage would have given all of the possible Trump supporters and thinking, man, there's no reason for me to even go out because Hillary's going to win, and even though I'd rather have Trump, you know, I know that that he's never going to have a chance. That You know, he looks so stupid the way that they're making him look so stupid. I think there probably were more Trump supporters than the, uh, the vote tally would suggest, okay? And now that we're in this phase of electing our president, I think that every electoral college member has to keep in the back of their mind, can we actually even trust voter turnout from other states? See, they have to represent their own state, right? 
and they can in their own state take a little trip down to the registrar's office down to the county clerk and go inspect things for themselves but to think that oh those millions more votes that came out of california must be legit because california must be just as you know with it as my county that i could actually inspect for myself um no no they should not assume that okay there could be piling on of votes from uh, disreputable uh, county clerks and registrars as we speak right now trying to make it look even worse for Donald Trump because just politically it looks good that you know for the Democrats that he didn't get the popular vote um, so no I don't think that we should be instructing our electoral college to flip on uh, the rules as they were set out um, just because we don't like the outcome um, now you know <sighs> but let me tell you about the the odds of this happening anyway because I've I've counted it up for myself um, in the history of the United States having these uh, elections with this electoral college only 157 electors in all of those presidential elections every four freaking years only 157 of them have ever ever been a faithless elector that flipped on what the people of their uh constituency wanted now um, about half of those almost half of them uh didn't vote for the person that their uh constituency wanted because that person was dead okay so that's a good reason for flipping okay not just oh some people pressured me because you know votes in a different county that uh, you know a different district that i don't even represent were higher you know and, and kept on stacking on for for one of these uh candidates that that i'm not about to vote for you know that's you know that's not as good of a reason as oh well they're dead you know, if they're dead, then yeah, you should. That's the whole reason why we have this electoral college because something catastrophic could happen, right? But uh, three times, the electors actually refused to vote altogether, and I think that actually is more appropriate, considering that the actual popular vote is none of the fucking above. Maybe some electors should should refuse to vote all altogether. Three of them in history have. And we do have the two least popular candidates fucking ever that were the nominees for the two major parties in our country. Um, but th that all being said, faithless electors have never actually been able to change the outcome of a, an election. And this would be if uh, Steve Shives and, and Jenny McDermott and Change.org uh slacktivist armchair fucking keyboard commandos had their fucking way this would be the first fucking time ever that, that that this has happened right and i can't tell you how much i think that that would be destabilizing to our fucking country um yeah in uh 1836 was the closest that we ever had this actually happen. And that was not even for the presidency. That was regarding the vice presidency. And that was because uh, the state of Virginia didn't like that the uh, vice president-to-be was uh, somebody who had relations with someone who was one-eighth black. And Virginia didn't like the, the idea of black people being anywhere near the White House, and in, in some ways that hasn't changed. But um, it never has it happened that this has changed who we had as president. Never. These faithless electors have never, ever gotten it done, okay? Um, 2004 was the last one that we ever had, and, you know, that means in 2008, 
you know, or 2012, both of Barack Obama's uh, elections, no one flipped, uh, you know, either way. No one, you know. And so that's how fucking rare it is. In fact, I fucking counted it up, and my math might be off, but I went to Wikipedia and saw how many electors we had every fucking year. Because it wasn't always uh, 538 like it is now, right? So I went down and I, I counted every fucking year. Be careful because they stack years in these columns. So I counted it up and I came up with 24,086. 24,086 times we've had an elector cast a vote. And only 157 of those times have those votes been against what their constituency wanted them to vote. Okay? That's very horrible odds. Let me do this for you. 157 uh, divided by 24,086 equals... Uh, shit. <laughs> less than 1%. Uh, less than 1% of the time. It's 0.6%. Uh, 0.7% uh, if you round up. That, the, that they've uh, decided not to uh, vote the way that their constituency wanted. And you are, are like, urging them all that this is the actual time that it needs to happen. Um, so, yeah. In order to, for this to happen, I, I also did the math on this, you're going to need 42 of them. Okay? And in the past decade, it's only happened once. In 2004, it happened once. You know? And you need 40 fucking two of them? <sighs> um, give it a rest. And realize that Hillary Clinton conceded. Okay? And she did so for the good of the union. Okay? Um, that's why when there were hanging chats in Florida that, you know, there, there were, you know, all these contested, uh, election outcomes in Florida for Al Gore in 2000, you know, he was like, uh, no, I am not going to, uh, fuck with this. You know, I'm not going to destabilize the union and keep on contesting this further. I'm going to sit the fuck down and concede and say that I will work with you to make this country better. And I think he did the right thing. Okay? I do. Um, because we have these elections to have a finalized answer. And once you get that, you can't just keep on saying, no, let's vote again. Let's, 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 let's do something else to destabilize it. But uh, that's where we're at now. I guess people... I, I don't think that, that people didn't take civics in high school. I think they just fucking decided that they don't agree with it. <laughs> um, see you next time.